he had really became disrespectful this one day and it let me think the day that my high school sweetheart called his phone he felt a type of way he probably felt like this dirty bitch So thank you for tapping in. My name is Raquel, and you have tapped into Divine Intuitive Guidance and Tarot, and I'm excited. So on this channel, I'll be telling stories. I will be doing tarot. I will be giving the wisdom and the reflections that Spirit has put on me. So it's going to be a good time. If this is your thing, you're going to be doing the thing, thinking with me. You know what I'm saying? So listen, healing is a never-ending journey. And um, I also want to say, if you like to donate, I greatly appreciate that. It's not mandatory. It's not like this is church or nothing. I ain't going to kick you out. You know, it's a pastor or whatever that was kicking out people who didn't tithe. He's got some people making sure that the congregation tithes. And if they don't, then they get put out. This ain't that type of gig. But however, the donations will be going to my development, meaning I'm looking to go into holistic medicine and stuff like that and other healing modalities so that will help but it's not mandatory okay this is not the feed the children commercial we've been donating all this time we're trying to figure out when the hell these kids gonna be fed okay <laughs> that's not what it is but anyway so one day I was thinking about something it this took me back I said healing is a never ending journey and for a long time I used to be mad at this guy that I had a little history with and I couldn't understand he had disrespected me one time and and I never talked to him again and I said if I ever seen him you know I was gonna act a fool and what is so crazy even though all of that is so far behind me I kid you not matter of fact my notes say February 6th so this had to be when I really thought about this I finally realized why the dude was mad at me so let me give you some uh, backstory and let and let me also say this from what I've come to understand from my years on this planet is that a big component of healing from trauma and hurt is to stop holding those who have hurt you to unrealistic expectations and I can give you two good reasons to back this up and it might actually just equal up to one if you know better you do better knowledge and truth convicts people and it's nearly impossible not to do better in some form once you are informed and received clarity. And people are always doing their best in their current situation. I believe that for the most part. Unless you're some kind of clinically insane, something else is going on. But I'm just saying for the general template of the human, that's what I believe. Okay, so these are not to give an excuse to anyone in their behavior. But it's to kind of put some things to rest and to let things go. Okay. I, it's so funny because in my notes, I have the guy's name. I'm not even going to give the name because I just don't think that's necessary. But I will say this. Our perceptions can be distorted because we're only privy to what we know, see, and experience. That doesn't take away from the blow that is yielded and the blowback that becomes the consequence. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, we get caught up in how we see things. Um, a lot of times we don't see everything because it has something to do with us and we only see what hurt us, bothered us, and all of that kind of stuff. But it be other shit going on in the background that we don't know about. It be their side. You know how this says your side, their side, and the truth. It, it be that type of thing going on. And without the full picture, you know, some feelings can be had. So let me get the back story. The front story of it is, I'm going to do how, how the TV do. So they give you a preview of the end, and then they take you back. Okay, so the end one day, this guy that I had been dealing with called me and was very disrespectful, was saying some very terrible things to me, calling me names, and I just hung up the phone. And it pissed me off, right? I wasn't hurt, but I was pissed. I was pissed, and then I was trying to figure out, like, what the hell made him think that it was okay like what about me made him say these things to me right and I began to reflect about some of the shady stuff that was going on and really honing into it you know sometimes you know how they say hindsight is 2020 but it took me over 20 years later to get to the bottom of it what it was was he felt a type of way 
he felt some I don't I don't want to say jaded I don't know the right word but let's just say he was pissed this is just what I believe and I could be wrong so here goes the backstory. I had a boyfriend that I was with the whole high school. Well, majority of our high school. We were high school sweethearts. Tenth grade, we weren't technically a couple. We just operated as one. That was some weird stuff, but that's not really important to the story. So your senior year, things change. You know, you're looking for schools and stuff like that. It's exciting. You have big dreams. I want to go here. You want to go there. Now, me and this guy that was my high school sweetheart, we literally did everything together. My parents were very strict, but they really liked this guy. His grandmother stayed on our block. My dad was really close with his grandmother. They were really good people. He would come over. We rode to school together. We did a lot together. He was over my house a lot. I was over his house a lot, all that type of stuff. But when it comes to now you're a senior in high school, you got to start thinking about college. And what had happened was it was some different things that went on in our relationship. Although we were very close, uh, I think some things that were outside of my control were like kind of having him think about things differently in regards to us. I think whatever was going on personally, I don't know. I think that was more on his end. Let me say that without getting too detailed and, you know, making up accusations because I don't know. These are, these are assumptions or my observations, what, what I've gotten just from being in the situation. And so he was going to go to a school out of state. He had let me know he wanted to go to Tuskegee. And he was saying that he thought that we should break up. We should go our separate ways, right? Okay. So, of course, I, that hurt me. That really hurt me because my thing was like, I mean, you know, we were in high school. We were thick as thieves, right? So, it's like, um, yeah, what he was saying made sense. In hindsight, you know, we're going to go off, experience a different environment. We're, we're doing our thing. Let's kind of separate. But I wasn't trying to hear that at the time. One thing about me, okay, so you saying let's going to be cool or whatever, but we're going to go our separate ways. So to me, in my mind, that meant that the relationship, we were still going to hang out. We were still going to do the norm, but we were going our separate ways. So I didn't see a big deal with entertaining other interests, right? Because that was the path that he, the door that he opened, the trajectory that he sent us on, Right. But, you know, people say things and feel things another way. And, and this is not to shade my high school sweetheart or nothing like that. No shade to him. Again, we were kids. People think all type of stuff. You know, you could say something that makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, I want you until I walk away. You going to be totally obligated to me. You know, not in a controlling way, but we're going to still be in this monogamous relationship even though I'm saying let's open the door that type of thing you know I met this guy I gave him my number we began to talk and so one day you know we would talk or whatever entertain each other and so my high school sweetheart I don't know why the, the guy had called my phone a couple times and he called my phone when I was with my boyfriend and so my boyfriend seen it. And so at this time we had Nextails or whatever. And so I had a Nextail i90. I don't remember what he had, but it wasn't Nextail. I had a Nextail i90. And you was the shit back in the day if you had that, right? A lot of people ain't had Nextails. I knew one other girl that had one. My dad had one and he got me one. So that's that. He said, I believe I found a way to allow you to text message because there were other phones that were text messaging, but mine couldn't or something. It was something. It was something with the messaging. I don't know. I don't think mine could text message, but or, or if it did, it was limited. It was something going on with that. I'm like, okay, sure. So he went to my phone. He found dude's number because that's what he was really looking for. That was the under the play for the overlay. That was the, the excuse to get in my phone. And so he called the guy, and the guy told him <laughs> what he didn't want to hear. And so that was just really a messed up day for me. I mean, we were taking our senior pictures and he blew up at me and he had his mom come pick him up because we rode together in my car. It was very embarrassing, very ridiculous. He threw my keys. It was just, it was so crazy. In my head, I, I, I was really confused because it's like, okay, you said, you know, we're going our separate ways. And it's like, why are you going through my phone? <laughs> As another one of my phones are chiming. 
why are you going through my phone? You know, you call somebody on some stupid stuff like that about your girl. Yeah, they're going to say that. You look for problems, you're going to get them. But being my high school sweetheart, we still, like, when he would come into town, we would still operate like normal. But we weren't really together. We worked past, past that. We got back to cool, but we were used to operating in a certain way. I think a couple years passed now, he, or some time had passed, and then the guy, like, we would see each other from time to time, but he had really became disrespectful this one day, and it let me think. The day that my high school sweetheart called his phone, he felt a type of way. He probably felt like this dirty bitch. Excuse my language. This dirty bitch, she's got a man, she this, that, and the third. He felt a type of way. You know how dudes do, they, they feel a type of way. So he said what he said. So it was just a lot of miscommunication. I mean, I wasn't in the headspace then to articulate everything th that I was feeling, rightfully so. You're saying this, but you do realize that you are opening the door for this. Hey, I will take your number. We can talk, but I've got this going on that's still kind of lingering, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it, it takes growth and maturity, so... I don't know, after I got clarity from that, I could kind of leave that alone because I realized the responsibility that I played in it. Ignorance or not, I, I still, he felt a type of way and I can't change that and I had a part in that. I got the backlash of it because I didn't really look at it, but hindsight is twenty twenty. You know what, let me see if I can, um, this is gonna be an unconventional channel. Let me see if Spirit got something to say. Here we got the hermit card. <laughs> In healing, sometimes we got to get quiet and reflect. And this was what I had to do. And it let me see you got the nine of baskets. Almost to a completion of the emotion. I was able to come to the conclusion of the emotions. What was going on between this relationship that I had going on. Ain't that deep? Sometimes we got to kind of hold back and look at ourselves. And look at ourselves from a different perspective. Have an objective Almost as if you're looking exterior of yourself at the situation. But healing is never an ending journey. At some point, after reflecting, we can get to the ten of baskets. We can get to some peace, some type of emotional fulfillment. All right. And that's the black tarot cards. I love these cards. I hope that... <laughs> You enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helps somebody. If you're thinking about something, you're jaded. Not jaded, but if you feel a type of way about any relationship that you've been in and it ended on a bad note, really begin to reflect and see how, what did I miss with my part in this, right? Because believe it or not, when you take accountability, when you go into hermit mode and you reflect, you can seek some clarity and it gives you peace, right? It brings you peace and you can let it go. So I can let it go. I can see dude. Matter of fact, if I seen him, I would walk up to him. I would talk to him and be like, you know what? I felt a type of way, but hey, I thought about this and really express my case and walk away because I'm that type of person. You know, I might have to see you and talk. If, if I ran into him, I'm saying. I'm not looking for the brother at all. But yeah, thank you for tuning in. That's my first video on... Divine Intuitive Guidance and Tarot with your girl, Raquel. I love you guys. See you soon.